focus on drawing in uh, charcoal, but if you don't have charcoal at home, you're very welcome to use either pencil or you can even use you know, acrylic paints if you have that or, or watercolor. If you have nothing but pencil and paper, that will absolutely work, but I'm gonna use charcoal so it's a little bit darker and hopefully um, it will show up a little bit better on camera. So the reference that we're working from today is kind of in that four by five ratio. So you can do this eight by 10, um, but I think I'm gonna do four by five for, just to start this out. So I'm just gonna kind of make a small charcoal sketch today. And that'll be fun because it'll kind of, you know, give us a chance to look at the process, see it really quickly, and then how fast this can take shape in just maybe 20 minutes or so. So we're often kind of working on things that take several weeks, and this is a good opportunity just to go a little bit quicker and create something just in one sitting. So if you want to work along with me, you can always kind of pause the video if you need a little bit longer. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, and some of you guys probably already know what this is, I want to find those halfway points. So I'm just guessing at where that halfway point could go. That's my guess right there. I'm going to measure that bottom part, compare it to the top, and I find I'm just a little too high, so I'm just going to move that mark down one smidge and then check that again. Okay. And now I'm going to check for half moving across. So I just kind of measured out that 4 by 5 box. That's if you want to measure. There's really no rules for this. If you want to just kind of sketch this in freehand, you don't need to go to this, um, you know, effort to do this. If you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit more accurate, though, I always recommend that we start out just by measuring, making a few marks. And just to do that, you don't need a ruler. You don't need to divide small little numbers or anything. Just take a guess where you think the halfway point is make a little mark and then use your pencil with the point of the pencil at the top of the um, space and your thumbnail right at the bottom. That's your measurement of that unit there and you want to just make sure that everything is more or less even. The good thing about this too is it's not, you know, it's not so critical that it's just perfect. It'll still give us a great idea of where things go. So. We want to work on developing accuracy. Starting with measurement is a really great way to do that. So again, just guessing, kind of checking those guesses. I think maybe a quarter ways about there, and I just sort of measure out, make sure that I have pretty much equal distance between those marks. And then we're almost ready to get started. So these sort of help me place the large shapes and that's what I really want to start with. I don't want to start in with detail, with texture, with getting into like the eyes and the reflections in there because it's pretty cool but I definitely will not have those in the right spots if I just begin with those small details. So I like to kind of you know break things down into really simple shapes and just looking at this I sometimes will even sketch just a little bit on the the photograph and then I notice the bottom of the head shape, which is what I'm going to start with, lies just a little bit above that first quarterway mark. So I want to find that mark on my drawing right here. And I'm going to just kind of sketch in where the bottom of that head shape could go. And I know that the very top of his head is, you know, someplace in this area. It's a little closer to the top than it is to that quarterway. And so I'm just kind of lightly, you know, sketching back and forth. I think pressing too hard and getting too definite of a line right now, it's not really necessary. So we're just going to keep it light. Right now I'm using pencil. I will switch to charcoal so you guys can see it maybe a little bit better. Let's do that. When I work with charcoal, if you happen to have this at home, the vine charcoal is a really good one to start with because the other ones are not as erasable as they could be. So this is a little bit more challenging on something this size. But I do want to darken my lines. You don't need to darken yours. But I want to show you um, sort of what I'm starting with, what I'm getting in. Okay, the next shape that I want to look for and place starts right around here. And it's this muzzle shape. So if you guys can see that kind of muzzle that I'm tracing with a the pencil there. Okay, that's where we want to put in. 
I notice the top is at a bit of an angle and that angle is going to help place the eyes and show that the head is turned just slightly. So looking at that quarter way mark here, we're going to move down from that just a little bit. I'm going to start with that angle between the eyes. That's also describing that top of the muzzle shape. So after that, we're just going to sketch this around. And I'm just looking at like you know, the side of the eye shape here where that's going to fall. And now I want to kind of break that muzzle down just a little bit further into the top portion. I think I have that a little far in. And then there's a bottom portion that has some teeth showing and the bamboo stalks. Okay. So I want to just show where that nose is going to be placed. And that usually is going to fall um, in that same angle. The top of the nose should be at the same angle that we see and extend it so you can really see it for the top of the eyes. Now, it isn't going to be too detailed right now, but I do think getting in those dark shapes, drawing those shapes in will really help us see the panda. There we go. All right, so his eyes are going to go someplace in here. But they're pretty dark and I'm not going to get into detail too much yet, but I think we have those placed along that line pretty well. And now I'm just going to kind of sketch in the remainder, remainder of these shapes. And those are the ears up at the top here. It's pretty dark in that background, but I think it's going to be nicer if when we get into value, we can maybe meet, leave that a little bit um, lighter in the background. All right. And then finally, I'm going to draw on these little bamboo shoots. Or leaves. All right, now I'm going to move away from the drawing just a little bit and just kind of look at it from farther back just to make sure everything's sort of placed correctly, shapes are looking proportionate to one another. And we can also do some checking. So just to go over this just a little bit, you know, what if we checked the height of the panda's head like this by laying our pencil right there on that head. Pencil points at the top of the head, thumbnail at the bottom. We turn that across and we can see that it is a little bit wider than it is tall. So let's make sure that we, I have my drawing here a little bit wider than it is tall. So here's how tall it is. Okay, and now we want to check it is indeed just a little bit wider over here than it is tall. So that's measuring okay. I think we still haven't quite established where that background will be, but I'm going to go ahead and start to block in the main values. So instead of getting into detail yet, we always save that for last. We just want to kind of give it a quick fill in of what sort of light and what's kind of dark. And that'll really, um, you'll see it shape up pretty quickly. So I'm going to make the background just a little bit lighter than it is in the photograph. I think it's just printed a bit dark. I don't know if it's printing dark for you or if it's just my printer, but I definitely think we need to start with a base that's just a little bit lighter. So let's go for just a quick fill. And when I'm using this, I'm using Vine Charcoal. Vine's a good one to start with. It's very forgiving. I'm just going to rub that in. If you want like a smoother texture, you can definitely keep working the surface, rubbing it into the surface. You can even use things like a little scrap of t-shirt or something like that to just kind of rub that into the surface. If you happen to have a chamois, that's always nice. It sort of evens out the tone of it and sometimes it lightens it a little bit. You can also make marks with it too. So we're just kind of blocking in like what's the background, what's the foreground. And just, I see a large sort of shadow shape over the front part of the face here. So I'm just going to take the side of that vine charcoal and just drop that whole area, everything really, right into shadow. Now the body below that is one of the darker areas. So we can go ahead and drop that down. And then the ears. some leaves that are going to 
gonna come across here and between the leaves it actually looks like it's a little darker than a leaf so I like to kind of separate out areas like this I'll go for that dark um, between value so as you can see I'm putting the color in sort of between those leaves there's that last one Now, because the leaves are not light, we definitely don't want those light values in the leaves to compete with the light values on the head. So I'm just gonna go in and lightly shade over that entire thing, both the parts that are still white paper and the shadows that I just drew in. And I realize that this isn't, you know, this isn't separating yet. This is just one stage in the process. So we're gonna get this to all separate. And you'll see these very separate values for the body, the leaves, even shading in the face. But this is just one step. And in this step, we're just sort of building up the general values. We're not getting too specific about anything at all. I do start to push a few darks in there. Starting to see that panda take shape a little bit. And I haven't even gotten into pencils, which are really going to be um, interesting and fun to like use to sort of get that fur texture, add some details, and continue to work on subtleties of the shading too. Because once we start to see little areas. All right, sorry, I think I lost just about 60 seconds there of the video somehow. Um, so what I want to do is just get a little bit closer so we can kind of look at where we're at right now and then see how we're gonna finish this up. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the 2B pencil and just start to, what I'm really looking for is where it's sort of dark in the face and where it's light. So looking at the reference here, I can kind of see these darker shapes to the right side and the left side of that muzzle there in the center. And I see it's darker on the front face of the muzzle as well. So I'm gonna focus just for a moment on getting those areas shaded in just a little bit. So as I'm shading, there's absolutely um, no reason to go in any other direction than the direction that you see the, the fur growing. So I'm using a very well sharpened charcoal pencil and I'm just kind of going in and making tiny little marks to darken these areas. I'm a little bit more specific. I see those bottom teeth, man, those bottom teeth are something I really wanted to make sure that I included. And I'm just, as you know, we kind of shaded that whole area in just lightly with the vine charcoal and that might be light enough if we color around them with a darker value to kind of show just a little bit of those bottom teeth. So the bottom teeth are lighter, the bottom lip is darker again, and then we see some fur kind of coming off the chin. <laughs> that pencil was not successful. All right, we're gonna switch to a 4B. It's got a very nice point, so looking forward to that. Here we go. Yeah, it's a little darker too. I'm just kind of going through a few times. There's um, a good, you know, a good thing to do is sort of spend just a few moments in each area and then move along. Don't get caught. If you find yourself and you haven't moved through in quite a while, time to go, go on to something else and come back to it. Ideally, the whole picture is going to kind of develop at one time. So that you're not seeing one area finished before another area has even started. That's really a good rule of thumb. And now I'm kind of separating those leaves just a little bit more. I love that little light kind of wobbly edge along the bottom of the leaf. I might have screwed this placement up a little bit, but that's okay, it's still gonna work. All right. I'm just bringing that lower leaf into focus just a little bit. 
And then I'm focusing here on the leaf that goes into the panda's mouth. All right. So I want to bring my pencil through this side of the face and get a little bit of that fur texture. So I'm just making tiny little light marks with a really sharp pencil. There's sort of these ripples of fur. So there's a sort of a light highlight that comes through here. Then we have a, another shadow a bit. And then we have that last layer of fur. And I'm going to take this opportunity to show that last layer of fur. I'm just going to darken in the background one more pass here. Because I don't really want to use a line to show where that ends. What I want to use is just a darker tone. So even though I'm working along the side of the panda with this line, what I want to do is come back later and change that from being a line to just being the background color coming right up to the edge of the panda's face, okay? So I'm gonna start with a very light line so that it's really easy to kind of cover up when I go back through and just darken in the background. And then I still think we could go much darker with these ears. So if you'll notice in the beginning, we were really keeping all of the values very light. And that's what I like to do to start out. You know, sometimes I've seen people say, oh, we like to establish our darkest darks really quickly. I tend to disagree. I think it's a little bit of a safer bet just to sort of do the big shapes with a, a nice light value wash. You're just sort of structuring it. Where is it going to be light? Where is it going to be shadow? There's no need to push that darkest dark until you're sort of ready for that. And here, you know, it's tempting just to really outline these and just go in there and make sure that everybody can see the um, very recognizable spots around the panda's eyes, but we have to look for areas where the edges are a bit softer, and I'm definitely losing the edge of that spot on that lower left-hand side of this one, and it's kind of tough to see it because it's sitting in shadow, so I want to make sure that I keep that a little bit um, softer of an edge on that bottom side right here. I'm going to save the highlight in the eye, so I'm really carefully just sort of coloring around that little highlight shape. That one went okay. <laughs> it's always like interesting to work this small too because about the width of a pencil point is all you really need to um, lose that highlight when you were trying to save it. Alright, so I got those eyes on. I'm going to darken in this spot on the panda's face. I'm going to try to keep that move in the same direction as the fur. And I'm looking again for where edges can be softened a little bit. Um, I think that looks okay. And now the nose. Just really quickly, I just want to darken in some indication of where the nostrils are going to be. Take this whole thing down a notch in value, but also notice that at the top of the nose, there's some little light texture. Okay, so I think the face is more or less done for just like a really quick study, but I'm looking um, at this leaf area, right where the leaf sort of meets the face, and I do notice that the leaf is actually, should be lighter than the face. So in order to do that, you may need, at any point, if you've gone just a little too dark or you just want to clean something up and give it like a, just a bit of a sharper edge or more value contrast, you can take your kneaded eraser, shape that up into, um, you know, a point that's going to fit the area, like that kind of thing. And then we can just go in there, take out... The highlight on that leaf. I love what it does to the texture of charcoal too. Just kind of smooths it out a little bit, brings a little more contrast. I'm going to switch to my 6B pencil and just finish this up with like a pretty dark layer of um, like a little bit 
of a problem with that one. So I'm just going to darken in the whole bottom part of the panda. And I don't think it's going to be everywhere. It's so just this. Okay. I want to leave those little chin fur texture marks. So I'm almost like coloring around those a little bit. And then I'm just kind of going in, same thing with the fur direction. I'm just kind of thinking about generally, like, you know, I wouldn't really want to go across with this. I think it's probably more effective to kind of come out at an angle like this. And then I want to clean up just a little bit around the mouth. So we can see the mouth coming over and above the leaves. I want to bring in that little bit of shadow that goes right underneath the muzzle here and onto the leaves and then we have one that's just a little bit next to it so just bringing in those darks are really going to help show where the mouth um, starts and the leaves end i guess all right so darken that in a little bit i think overall what i like to do too and what i always recommend is that we just take a second to kind of squint i like to maybe bring in just a little bit more detail around the face since that's usually kind of where people want to see it. They want to look at those eyes and, you know, faces are where it's at. So if you spend any additional time on this, one thing that you might try to do is just like take your finger, darken in some of those lights, just softening the edge just slightly. Okay, I don't want to lose them. I don't want to totally darken them too much. And then come back with a kneaded eraser, like a little pointy one. And then we can kind of lighten up along the edges and we can lighten up on the top of the nose. So we're just thinking about all the places that light would hit this panda. And I think 